You know, there's nothing more beautiful than someone and their pump really getting to know each other. Each GP Reeves pump is unique, but in this video, we're gonna be talking about the shared features that are common to all of them. The key parts of your pump are the frame, the regulator stack, and the inductor. I wanna go over a few parts in particular, just so we're all on the same page when it comes to terminology. The frame is what everything is attached to. Most of our pumps have a light gray frame, but some might have a different color. The frame is also where the RAM lives. Single post pumps have one RAM cylinder, which is located near the back of the pump. Dual post pumps have two, one located in each pillar on the sides of the pump. Also on the frame are alignment blocks that can be set to hold your container in place. Any accessories including controller, level sensors, or filter can be found attached around the frame. On the right side of your pump, you'll find the regulator stack. Depending on when you purchase the pump, you'll have one of a few designs. The functionality of these are the same, layout just very slightly. The RAM elevator control valve is a lever that is used to raise and lower the RAM. This will come in handy quite a bit, so get familiar with it. The RAM pressure regulator will be used to essentially control the speed of the RAM as you use the RAM elevator control valve. The higher the pressure, the faster it will go. And well, you can probably guess what'll happen if you lower the pressure. You can control how hard the inductor is pushing down on the material. If it's too light, you'll lose prime. Too hard and the material can separate or come out of the sides of the container by the seal or damage the pail. The pump shutoff valve controls the air to the pump air motor. If this is off, don't expect your pump to push out any material. The pump pressure regulator affects the output pressure of the material and the speed of the pump motor. Typically, the range is 30 to 60 PSI. Less than 30 PSI might not be enough to produce consistent switching of the upstroke, downstroke crossover mechanism in the pump. The inlet air pressure has a direct correlation on the outlet material pressure. If you have a 50 to 1 boost ratio on your pump and you're supplying it with 30 psi of air, the material leaving your pump will have 1500 psi. Some of our most common boost ratios are 50 to 1, 22 to 1, 20 to 1, and 43 to 1. All available boost ratios can be found on the screen now. The inductor air assist is located here and forces air into the container to help the inductor move up during container changes. Speaking of, there are several parts of the inductor. You've got your seals, your bleed ports, your T-handle, and of course, the actual inductor. The inductor applies and holds pressure on the material in the container, ensuring it remains primed and ready to be pumped at any moment. The inductor seals live at the bottom of the inductor. They are generally a flexible material that keeps unwanted air from getting in the container as well as making sure the material doesn't get out. Different inductor seal options are available, depending on the material you're pumping. The inductor T-handle and bleed port are the easiest ways to bleed material containing air out of your container. The inductor vent valve is the secondary bleeding port, located at the bottom of the inductor. The location of this valve makes it more difficult for thick materials to bleed through. So we recommend bleeding this valve after bleeding the T-handle port. The last part of your pump you should be aware of is, well, the actual pump. The pump lives right in the center of the unit and has a bleed valve of its own. To learn about how to use this valve, feel free to check out our pump bleed video. If you have any questions about your specific pump, check out the operator's manual that came with it, or feel free to give us a call. 